the most important message, I think, to get out of what I'm about to say in the next 10 or 15 minutes is that we're not going to be able to maximise margins or produce what a consumer wants or take advantage of this massive growth that we've seen in export markets or the opportunity in growing middle classes around the world and all of these sort of things if we don't make change. And if we're going to stay the same as what we have done, in our case, for 191 years, then we're going to keep getting the same result, which is concern about lowering farm gate returns, lower profitability, continued fragmentation and the larger sector of the industry relying on non-beef production revenue in order to be making a living. So we're in, a, we're in a reasonably unique position where we actually have some critical mass, even though the company's very small in the whole scheme of things, and I'll talk about that a bit more a little bit later on, but you know, we've got 191 years of, of history, and, and while that's a fantastic thing from a branding point of view, it's also one of our biggest challenges as well, because we've got a... The, the, making change is the difficult part for our industry because we have so much history, and we've done things a certain way for so long, and it's difficult to break out of that mould. So we suffer from that as much as anybody else does. Um, the thing is that being the biggest, having the most cattle, being the oldest, or all the other things that you can use as pub bragging rights, none of those actually have any financial value. And if we've got to look at how do we actually make margin, how do we produce what a consumer wants, then we've got to get past those things as a driver of our business and we've got to start looking at the things which will actually drive change across our, across our company. Trish actually talked about the growth in export markets and one of the things I want to make sure I, I cover and I just want to say it up front in case I, I miss it through the presentation is that we talk a lot about our, our export volumes in tonnages um, but we don't talk as much about our export volumes in value and tonnes represent production whereas value represent margin in our response to consumers. And one of the challenges for a company like ours is how do we actually grow our margin and grow our, our revenue and just changing the way that we turn off and the way that we actually target our cattle to market can significantly increase the revenue for our, for our company with, our, with the same number of cattle. So producing more market destined kilos um, where we can capture more value for those. So I think that's an important part of, of what we've got to look at. So, so what we are is a, a company now that's changed from being a, just a pastoral company historically to being a, cattle, to being a beef company and adding more value to the cattle that we have and making better marketing decisions and better market destination decisions for those cattle much earlier in their lives. And if you think about it simplistically, when you buy a bull, you've made a market decision. And for us, you know, that's very much the case when we've got about seven different supply chains that we actually use to, to produce market destined cattle. And when we've actually made a breeding decision, we've made a fundamental decision about the market destination for that animal. The problem is, if you don't have a way to link that decision to the value that comes from a consumer, then you're at the mercy of other people's decision making as far as your margin's concerned. So, so we've made a, a strategic decision a couple of years ago that rather than actually being someone who produces cattle and then finds a market for them, and largely, you know, we've been selling beef for 12 years now, but effectively we're a cattle company that sold some meat. And a couple of years ago, we made a strategic decision that we're actually going to be a beef company. So our decision-making process, as far as market destinations are concerned, actually starts at genetics. We have seven supply chains. We have cows allocated to those supply chains. When we make a breeding decision on those cows, we've actually made a market decision as well. Once you've made a market decision, the decisions you then make about what to do with that animal are, are driven by very different things. And it's not about do I have grass or not have grass, because you're already planning to have grass, because you know that that animal's destined for a market and you know that it's got a certain value to it. So you know, changing that fundamental thinking by allocating our cattle to a market has certainly had a big impact on the way we're driving our business. And this is one of the key parts to it, is getting more of our cattle further down the supply chain and closer to the consumer. So changing the way that we actually market and sell our cattle. And what this graph represents is uh, the first quarter of this year where we're talking about the change in the percentage of cattle that go through our brand of beef program as opposed to the percentage of cattle that actually are sold to external third parties. So retaining ownership of those cattle for a longer period of time and capturing more of the supply chain margin. So this isn't about wanting to be a processor, it's not about wanting to be a bigger feedlotter or being some other part of the supply chain, it's about how do we 
capture more of the supply chain margin and regardless of where that margin then shifts up and down the supply chain, we have the, the ability to actually capture that margin. So changing the way that we actually market our cattle and the, and the market destinations is having a big impact on the way we drive our business. And we talk about consumers and most of our customers are not necessarily consumers. Um, so most of our customers are uh, high-end importer distributors and there's a lot of discussion about our exports and sales around countries or around markets and the postcode or the, or the market is just an interesting piece of information. There's any number of countries that can consume everything that Australia produces, let alone everything that we can produce. So for us, the customer is actually a lot more important than the country. So Korea is our number one market, but it's only because our number one customer is there. The US is our number two market, but it's only because our number two customer is there. Our number two customer in the US is actually very, very similar to our number one customer in Korea. They're high-end importers, distributors, they buy the same brands, they buy the same specification of product, and their customers are largely the same sorts of people. And from an Australian marketing margin point of view, we can sell volume, no problem at all. So the global demand for meat's going through the roof, it's going to, it's going to outstrip supply between now and 2050, all of those macro you know, drivers are very exciting for the beef industry. But if we don't make a decision to try and capture value and increase the amount of value that we can um, get for our product, then we become a commodity uh, supplier and, and we'll miss a significant opportunity. And as a company, you know, we see that even though we've got a larger volume than other producers, we see the opportunity to be a, a high-end producer and supplier and, and target customers who are going to be able to capture more margin for us. And this is the, the demonstration of, of where we sit. So we're the largest cattle company in the world, which is all very impressive. But when you put it in the whole scheme of things of beef production, we produce 100,000 metric tonnes of, of live weight a year. So this, this sounds like a lot. Australia produces 4.4 million metric tonnes. So in the whole scheme of things in Australia, we're very small. And as Trish had up there before, you know, our category of producers is 2% of the production. So we're part of that chunk, so we're not all of it. But globally, there's 132 million tonnes, metric tonnes of live weight produced. So when you look at AACO in global beef producing stats, we get lost in rounding. So when we actually step out of the, we're the largest cattle company, we have the most cattle, we are the oldest, into the people who actually buy meat traffic, we actually don't exist. So if we think that those things have value to us, we're going to be very disappointed when we get out in the market. So, so the decision that we've made as a company is that if this is all we have, then let's make sure that we maximise the value for it, regardless of the category. And this, is an, this, this can be applied more broadly to the Australian production as well. So when you look at the Australian production, even if we produce or we export 1.2 million tonnes, a market that we're banned from at the moment in Russia imports a million tonnes. So there's multiple million tonne markets around the world. So 1.2 million tonnes sounds like a lot, but there's any number of people who can, can consume that. So the European importing demand is around four or 500,000 tonnes, but they consume eight and a half million. So in the whole scheme of things, we don't actually produce a lot of meat. So the opportunity for us is to find the customers that appreciate the quality of product that we've got, appreciate the value from a brand Australia, and are prepared to actually pay, pay for the quality and the type of product that we produce. So our target is, you know, identifying these high-end markets regardless of the market category and make sure that we can actually maximise the value. So we've got examples of how we can do this with high-end Wagyu and that's, and that's one that's, a, that's an easy example. You can show you can produce a high-quality product and they can get in volume from anywhere else in the world and that's a, a very marketable product. But you can also do it with manufacturing meat. So there's great demand in the QSRs, the quick service restaurants around the world, to get a dedicated supply of product which can come from a single source of origin, whether that be country or individual producer, and actually has traceability and uh, the ability to provide some uh, you know, product guarantee and source verification behind it. There's a premium for that type of product available in the global meat markets. And that's something which is available to Australia and it's not available to many other countries. So there's an opportunity for us in all market categories to position ourselves at the top end of the supply chain. So, so I guess what we're doing as a company is trying to set ourselves up to be focused on producing beef. We're driving our business on the back of six goals. So one of them is around developing a brand, 
around making sure we've got a source of, of supply for our cattle, around guaranteeing processing capacity, um, around d increasing our um, productivity and, and our current um, production uh, focus, around innovation and technology. And Tris mentioned about the rate of change and adoption of, of technology, and that's something as a company which we've made a, a, a significant investment in ourselves. We've actually established a, a separate innovation and technology division to allow us to, to make faster gain as far as um, our livestock production improvements concerned and capture more value for our product for our consumers. And, and focusing on things like, you know, producing a higher quality carcass in a shorter amount of days, which increases our production efficiency while producing a high quality carcass for our consumers. So I guess in, in finishing, um, the, the challenge I think we have around margins and consumers is that historically the two things have been diametrically opposed, that we've had challenge making margins and because we've had challenge making margins we've actually had difficulty in focusing on what our consumers want. And I guess as a company what we're trying to do is get a focus on our end market, so shift our focus from being um, pastoral and historically based and shift our focus to be how do we actually produce a high quality product for our consumers and then making decisions along the supply chain which allow us to more consistently deliver that product for those consumers.